Oh, he says, you notice Jimmy and Ross Dwelly bulked up and McGlinchey has his gut back. They fed Slim Mike, finally, finally fed him. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm super excited about that. Um, that's, you know, I want to see a stark lack of him getting knocked on his ass this year. That's that's I don't want to see him getting blown back like he did last year. And I think that extra weight, like, listen, when you slim down, you know, when Mike slimmed down, I was talking to him directly for a second. But when Mike slimmed down, it's not like his footwork got better. It's not like he got quicker. He was the same, he, the same. So you might as well have that extra weight. That way, you know, you're not you're not at a weight disadvantage to every defensive lineman that play. Like he's out there running out there at like 240. Like you can't you can't do that, dude. You're a tight end right now. You got to put on that weight, that that chunk, dude. If you're a 300 pound guy at six foot seven, six foot eight, whatever he is, it's a lot harder to you know even if because you're taller than a lot of guys, so your leverage is automatically going to be up high, and so. You know, even if somebody gets under your pad level, if you're 300 pounds, dude, it's still going to be pretty hard to just completely blow you off the ball. So that that's really, you know, a good thing to me that they they address that. And they were like, hey, you know, Mike, we don't know what you're doing, but you need to gain some weight. At the very least, bulk up, because just like you said, you know, he's taller center of gravity. You know, he's going to get pushed on his ass pretty easily. And he was last year. Um it was reported today. I don't know if you saw this that the, the 49ers worked out linebacker uh, Brandon Marshall, the former Broncos mm -hmm. linebacker. Do you think that's just like a depth move if they do? Yeah, sign him? yeah, they need to address that. Um, I looked at David Lombardi's like projected 53, and he had like 10 defensive linemen, but like four linebackers. And I went back and looked through our depth chart. The linebacker spot's pretty thin. You have Warner and Greenlaw, and you know, you have Al Shair. Um, you know, you have Enziocha, and it's like outside of Warner and Greenlaw, there's no real re like above replacement level starters. They're both, you know, Al Shair, cool man. Like I like you, um, but it's, you're not irreplaceable. So I think they really do need to address, especially when cuts come um, in the off season, to address the linebacker spot and see if that they can kind of bolster that a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they. Look, if they, they're pretty top heavy at the position, just like you were saying. So if anything were to happen, injury wise, yeah. God forbid. But at least and, and Brandon Marshall, he was a really good linebacker with Denver. He's got plenty of experience. Seemed like uh if I remember reading the reports back then, he's a pretty good leader. So if they do happen to sign him, like I said, it was just a workout, it would be yeah. a, a nice addition for the 49ers. I like this comment. Kittle made sure he was in shape this offseason. Now Kittle is his dad and plays for Staley. Yeah, Kittle told Kittle told McGlinchy, here, hold my beer. <laughs> and Mike, you know, just stood there and Kittle's like, no, literally hold my beer, drink it, eat the food that I put out on the table for you while I go work out. And then once you're done eating, then you can come join me for the workout because we need you to, you know, we're going to get some, get you in the weight room and we're going to get you lifting. But, you know, we need you to be doing the pizza and beer curls to throw on some weight, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Just the thought of it. But Kittle, that dude is in the in the gym working out, doing his crazy workouts like every yeah. day talk about dedication yeah well and then they had that video of kittle out there with with jimmy and that's when i was like oh no jimmy actually is like thicker muscular wise not he's not just like fat he put on some muscle too and that's so that was that was interesting to see um speaking of kittle though did you see his interview with rich eisen on the rich eisen show you know i have not i didn't i didn't catch it so there was one you know and he paid the you know Oh, we have two quarterbacks. They're both my teammate. I root for whoever. Um, you know, you love to see the competition. If you're not trying to compete, then you don't belong on the football field. You know, all that little stuff that 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 coach speak, that nothing speak. Uh, but there was one interesting thing in there. Um, and I you, you know, I really think you should go back and watch it. But there was one point where Rich asked him about, you know, Trey Lance and how he looked and stuff like that. And, you know, he gave the standard, oh, he's got a cannon, this and this and that. But one thing that he said was he looks further along than a rookie quarterback should. Hmm. And that's a day into OTAs. And then I pair that with um, Alex Smith's brilliant appearance on Colin Cowherd, um, where he talked about what it was like, um, you know, if he knew right away that Patrick Mahomes was going to be a guy. And he's like, yeah, you, you can see that there's a confidence level there, that there's, you know, beyond the physical tools, you can see it with the mental processing. 
And then, you know, Shanahan said that he was really excited for Trey because they were throwing all this stuff at him and he seemed to be doing really well with it. So you're combining a few different sources. Um, you know, the scuttlebutt around the league is like when a dude shows up to camp, it takes players a practice or two to really know if he's going to be a player or not. Um, and then, you know, you have a guy who has a super complicated offense uh, talking about how, you know, the young guns picking it up and, and doing a really good job, despite the fact that they're just lobbing everything at him right now. So I, you know, this early they're, they're, singing effusive praise for him um i mean we might get into the heart of training camp and actually have a legitimate quarterback battle on our hands there, there's no guarantee that jimmy is going to be the starter if what is being set and of course you know you want to watch out for just being super complimentary to the number three overall pick but there i mean there is a chance if if lance is in there in practice every day and he's making throws that you know jimmy just simply can't and he's picking up the offense in a way that puts him pretty close to, you know, what you would expect from a Jimmy Garoppolo or, or somebody like that. You know, what's what's the reason not to do it? Um, especially if they're, you know, again, we're always rumored to have the, you know, the wide receiver on the list. So we're always rumored with the Julio Jones moving. Jimmy Garoppolo can make Julio Jones a reality. So it just bears watching. And it's, you know. I don't necessarily believe that all this stuff is going to necessarily go down, that it's going to be, you know, Lance starting right away or whatever. I'm just thankful that we have these storylines to kind of just dig into and chew on for a little while and kind of figure out, Hey man, the, the dead period of the off season is over. We're gearing up to get ready to go towards the season. And for me, it's just exciting to see the players back out on the field and realize that NFL football is just a couple months away. Yeah, and, you know, the whole thing with trying to decipher and, and read between the lines of, is he really just talking up his teammate? Does he mean this? That's what sucks around this time. And, you know, it's only a matter of time before we actually find out, is he really that much further along than a rookie? But uh, you've said it all along. Players know. These players know as soon as these guys hit the field, as soon as they get in the locker room with them. Do they have it? Do they not have it? There's a certain swagger, especially at the quarterback position. Jimmy had it pretty early on. Did he lose it? I don't know. Um, it seemed like the vibe might have been off. That's from obviously an outsider looking in, but yeah. I do think Trey Lance, there's just something about him. He's got that charisma. Um, and there was an appearance, I think it was uh, John Lynch on Chris Collinsworth. I don't know if you happen to catch that. He was on. No, Chris Collinsworth has that, that podcast, I think, with uh, Sherman. Yeah. And he said that Kyle Shanahan was drawing up plays for Trey Lance. Oh, I did see that when they were on the plane ride coming from Justin Fields. Yep. Pro day. He yeah. was drawing up plays for Trey Lance. How awesome is that? That it's really awesome. But then it just, you know, it plays further into the thing of like, dude, why are all these people saying that, uh, that it was Mac Jones Mac and that Jones. Kyle was pressured to go Trey Lance. It's just so silly. Yeah, but it's true. Um, yeah, thought, AHM Tar is in the chat. He's he's kind of backing up what I said that Kittle said that Trey Lance looks better than a rookie quarterback already. And that's what I was saying. That's that's the one insightful thing that I took off because you can say, oh, he looks really good, but you know, also temper expectations, right? Oh, he looks really good. You know, as a rookie coming in, you just want to see that they're making progress. But he went out of his way to say he looks better than what a rookie quarterback usually looks like. So that to me is effusive praise. So I agree. And and coming from Kittle. I mean, he's always had Jimmy's back, but now it's like, you know, it's like asking a parent who their favorite kid is. <laughs> like they're gonna yeah. say good things about both. It, it, it's tough, but I, I'm well. Super and and Kittle's Kittle's like us, though, right? Kittle's all about the the name on the front of the jersey, not necessarily the name on the back. And you know, you understand that it's it's a business, and you know, you love these guys, and you go to battle with these guys. But at the end of the day, you know, it's about the team rather than just the one person. Yep. Uh, Melissa says, hey, Matt, with all these crossovers, it'd be badass for you to join Nitty Gritty Niners live on Twitch. Breezy and Matt Rance would be epic. Hey, if Wayne wants me on, I'll be on anytime. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Wayne. Uh, Steve, so he looks better than what Beathard and Mullins look like. That's a low bar, though. Like, that's like saying someone who's on mechanical ventilation is better is better looking than a corpse. 
Like, I mean, I guess you're alive, but <laughs> coming from a medical professional, <laughs> that's a low bar to clear, dude. That's funny. Um, yeah, I, I thought the whole thing, just like you said, you know, drawing plays for Trey Lance on the plane ride back from seeing Justin Fields. But yes, it was always Mac Jones and 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 Kyle Shanahan felt pressured. It's like, do you guys even hear yourself speak when you're still trying to push this narrative for whatever reason? Yeah. It was always Trey Lance. I, I do think that um, they th- the article that Jim Trotter came out with was saying that they didn't tell each other, but I do think that they knew and they stayed with their convictions. And I just can't imagine it actually being Mac Jones. We're not going to get down that though because we can get in there. We went in over it a ton. Uh, leading up to the I mean, draft. I just want to say, what is the point now of lying, of yeah. not being honest? Because you, you don't necessarily have to say it was always Trey Lance to not shit on Trey Lance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you could have always been, yeah, we had our eye on Mac Jones, but man, like during the process, Trey Lance just came up and blew us away. Like, it's as simple as that. But for them to say from day one that it was Trey Lance was on their radar, for John to come out and say, I was watching him in 2019, um, you know, obviously he said Kyle can't do that because he's coaching the team. He's like, but I've been watching him since before. There's no reason to go out and say that stuff and have it not be true. It's just, you know, and and in a day and age where everybody, you know, is kind of lying about a lot of things or dishonest or misleading (laughs) or a lot of misinformation or whatever. Every now and again, you know, just you, you just got to take things at face value. And for somebody like John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, who always came off to me as pretty open and honest, especially Kyle, very blunt. There's no reason for them to not be honest with what their situation was. Yeah. And, and it actually seems like the opposite of that happened to where Trey Lance was their first initial you know, thought and, and selection. And maybe they were going through the motions trying to see if anybody else would change their mind but it seems like i mean it's like responsible scientific experimentation right exactly it's where we have this hypothesis that trey lance is the best quarterback now let's go out and try to prove that wrong by studying all these other guys and then when you come back to it and trey lance is still your guy then you're like well he's definitely the guy then and we can take him oh my god oh hundred dollar donation great fox thank you very much wow (laughs) <laughs> that's the biggest one we've ever gotten thank you i hope you didn't put the decimal in the wrong place homie i know yeah <laughs> like that's crazy thank you so much we thank appreciate you. it that's uh an early birthday present thank you very much it's awesome 